Well, good afternoon, YouTube. This is Chuck again, and got a little RV stuff video for you right now. And the question many RVers ask is, uh, what's better, solar or a generator? Well, I think I can probably talk about that since I have both. But let me back up and show you what I'm running right now. I got one of the little Honda generators that's hooked up to the back of my trailer where we're at. But I also have solar panels. Now I don't have the big setup on the roof like a lot of people do. I've actually, uh, let me get around where I can talk to you. Like I say, I don't have the big sol solar setup on the roof like a lot of people do. I have, uh, I have what they call a suitcase solar that plugs into the side of the trailer and I can take it out and set it wherever I want. And there's some pros and cons to that. Uh, probably one of, the, one of the pros is, of course, it, it's pretty low maintenance once you set it out there. And, uh, but to one of the cons about it is, and I can show you right now because it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. And if you look around here, look at this, look at how much of this area is in the shade. Now we're up here, up in the pine trees right now. And the problem is if you try to run solar here, you got to go move the darn thing about every 20 minutes. The other thing is the, the output is pretty low. Now, this is just a little Honda 2000 generator. It's not even one of the 2200 ones. It's one of the older ones, and I've had it for quite a while. And if you notice it's sitting on those little platforms, I ought to tell you why it's sitting on the leveling blocks. And the reason for that is if you look at how the plug goes in there, the plug is actually a little bit long, and it, and it, it puts it kind of in a bind if you set it directly on the ground. There's all that little yellow adapter plugs into the generator itself and and of course my my utility plugs in the back of the trailer if you do run a generator it's always a good idea to throw a little security cable on it that's for bicycles actually and i actually have it on there to you know it, it won't keep a thief from stealing it but it might keep an honest person honest now my solar panels if we're, depending on where we're at if we're out in the desert spin you back around again you can see the Dog wandered around there in the background. Flapjack, don't get too far away. But if we're, we camp all year round in Arizona, and of course, we, where we live at, uh, we have the option to be able to go south and be down in the desert or go north and be up in the mountains. And so obviously when it's hot down in the desert, we come up here and in the wintertime when it's cold up here, we go down the desert somewhere. Well. If we're camped somewhere where we have an unobstructed view of the sky, the solar panels work a little bit better. But where they don't work is here, not if it's shady or cloudy or whatever where the sun can't get to them, uh, the solar panels quite honestly can't keep up. And the other big issue, the other big issue is the furnace. The furnace in the trailer is our largest use, of, uh, the thing that uses the most power. And if we're running the furnace, and we actually, last night it got cool enough, we actually had to run the furnace a little bit. If we're running the furnace, then the solar panel just will not, will not keep up. If it's warm enough that we don't need the furnace, uh, then we can pretty, and we're in an open area where we have an unobstructed view of the sky, the solar panel will keep our batteries charged up just fine, doesn't have a problem. But if we're someplace where we have shadow or clouds, or if we have to run the furnace, then the generator works a lot better. And I guess to summarize it is I can run the solar panels all day long, but if I crank up the generator, I can get more charging into my batteries in an hour running the generator than I can run in the solar panels all day long. And so what that basically means is if I had to, my choice between one or the other, uh, I'd pick the generator, uh, even though it does burn gas and takes a little bit of maintenance. And, you know, the cost is about the same. Uh, now, if I had a big, uh, let's talk a minute while we're talking about solar. Let's talk about solar on the roof because there's a lot of people doing that and a lot of people swear by it. Uh, we actually uh, met a couple that have the exact same trailer that we do and they live full time in it. And they managed to put over a thousand watts of solar up on the roof and uh, cost them a lot of money. Uh, solar, they had a pretty well-known solar company do it and it was pretty expensive and we ask them how they like it, and oh, they love it. Well, I think in reality, 
uh, they look they love it because they spend a lot of money on it. Uh, I think in the in the end they probably have a generator just like anybody else does. Now, the key behind all of it, I guess, is try to keep your power usage down. If you can keep your power usage down to a minimum, then either one of them works just fine. But there's a whole lot of people, and I've I've seen it in vans, and I've seen it in schoolies, and all kinds of different deals where. People end up putting high usage appliances in there and then they have to have a some kind of a high output charging system keep their batteries up to run these high usage appliances. I've seen guys that uh, in a van, it's really not much different than my van, and they have $1,000 worth of solar on the roof and $1,000 worth of battery under the bed and another $1,000 worth of refrigerator just to keep their beer cool. Well, if you want to do that, that's fine. But, it's, you know, there's a simpler way to do it. And, and uh, I per personally prefer, you know, I don't drink beer, so that doesn't affect me at all. But I understand, uh, you know, you get what you want, and it's up to the individual how they spend their money. I'm a little uh, leery about all the rooftop solar on a trailer because of the fabric roof. And I look at every one of those screws they put in there as one more chance for a water leak. And plus, you can't inspect the roof. And... You got to have access to your solar because you got to clean your panels because they'll lose about 20% of their efficiency when they get dirty. So there's a lot of a lot of pros and cons to all of it. Uh, as I said, my choice would be if I had to choose between one or the other, I'd take a generator. So that's just something to think about. You can obviously do what you want, and uh, I'm gonna spin in here one more time. Take a quick peek at my setup there. Very simple. I have the other generator as well because on these little Honda generators, you can marry two of them together to double the output. And theoretically, that's supposed to run the air conditioner. Well, in my case, uh, when I try marrying them together and run the air conditioner, one of them cuts out because it says it's thermally overloaded. I think it's probably a bad thermal switch. And what I really should do is take them both down to somewhere where they can actually test them under load because I think it's probably something wrong with one of my generators. But every time I've tried to run the air conditioner with the two generators, it just flat doesn't work. So other people probably had other experiences with it, uh, but that's my experience. So I'll let you go with this one, give you a quick pan around. We're still up here in the woods. Beautiful spot, rainstorm earlier today, but it settled down now, it's late afternoon. Shadows are starting to get long. Just a pretty spot to be in. We're heading home in the morning. I got my, my navigator flapjack there. As we always say, the dogs, they see the world through their nose, and he's no exception. So with that, we'll tell you all love each other, take care of each other, and we'll talk to you on the next one. So right now, I'll just tell you peace out.